All right, what we have here is the primary nesting beach for this population of diamondback terrapins in Cedar Point Marsh. You can see this is a uh, oyster hash beach, which is different than a lot of other areas of the country that has sand where these animals lay their eggs. They lay here in this oyster hash. So in order to catch them here, this is a standard uh, technique used for uh, catching a lot of reptiles. It's called a drift fence with bucket traps or pitfall traps. So it's a drift fence with either bucket or pitfall traps depending on your terminology. So all this is here is a silt fence that you can buy in any hardware store when uh, construction companies do hard uh, construction around certain sites. They want to keep silt out of those streams and creeks. All this is all this is what this is. This is a commercial silt fence. We bury it in the ground so it becomes a barrier that they cannot, the female turtles, when they come up to lay their eggs, run into this fence and they can't go underneath it. So, being a determined turtle, they normally will just walk down the fence. And they will reach an area either along the fence or on the end of the fence where we have put these buckets, buried these buckets that are camouflage with a flap on top that's on a swivel. So that looks similar to oyster hatch, but what happens is it's on a swivel. So what happens, the turtle hits that, it flips, it falls in, and voila, we have a captured female turtle. This is a shade, or at least portions of the day, this will keep some of the sun off this bucket so that they really don't overheat. So what you'll see is all along this fence here, the little flap, flaps on them that swivel, and we have the umbrella shields. So we've got uh, five to seven of these, depending on which year, five to seven of these silt fences with these bucket traps uh, all up and down this beach. And it's kind of a random thing. Uh, you know, some turtles will come up here, obviously, and not hit the fences, and so they'll lay somewhere else. We've actually had some lay right at the base of the fence. But in reality, a lot of them will go along looking for a particular good spot and just fall into it. So we get anywhere usually from about 15 to 20 females, adult females a year, in which we ta then take them back to the lab and secure the eggs out of them, and then hatch the eggs and raise the little hatchlings. Uh, uh, for a couple of years till they're big enough to be released. So what we have right now is a turtle in this bucket and what will happen to her next is that we will take her back to the lab at UAB and we'll inject her with oxytocin which forces her to delay her eggs for us and that's when we will have the eggs hatched over the next couple of months and then raise the little hatchlings to at least two years old before we release them in the wild. The question. Oh, where do you get the buckets from? The buckets are just commercial uh, flower buckets, planters that you can buy in any of the hardware stores. What happens is we modify them by drilling some holes in the sides and put this plexiglass top on them that fits it perfectly on a swivel. And there, there's a fellow in our physics shop at UAB that makes, makes those arrangements and put them in the buckets for us. This is a technique with these uh, drift fences and bucket traps, it works even for a lot of amphibians like salamanders and certain frogs. It works for snakes that are small enough they can't climb out the bucket. So this is a fairly common herpetological research tool. Uh, 
lots of times the fences are not just silk fences like these some people make them out of uh, um, aluminum flashing or hardware cloth so you can you can make them out of various things but the silk fences are just easy to put in and easy to buy so uh, when you get the terrapins back to the lab uh, how many eggs do they usually lay Usually anywhere from about seven to about, oh, I would say about 11. Um, and so that's that one batch. Now each terrapin female lays at least two batches of eggs per year. And some of them we think lay three. So they're fairly productive. And we sometimes catch the same female twice in a year. And we have caught a number of females several times over the course of five or six years that we've been doing this project. And how successful is your hatch rate? Hatch rate is 90%, wow. so we're very successful in that. In the wild out here between raccoons and uh, maybe flooding through the storm tides and things, I'm sure the, the hatch rate is not near that much. We estimate that 80 to 90% of the nests that are laid on this beach naturally are eaten by predators.